In this video, I'm going to be sharing with you an approach to parsing PDFs where I opt to use just pure Python and no AI, uh, just to show you how I might tackle that. And I'll also touch on some of the pros and cons of AI versus non-AI approaches to data parsing. So strap in, it's going to be a really fun video and we're going to do lots of Python. We're going to be using a PDF reader and we're going to be writing some code that'll give us some really structured data and in some of the pros and cons of using just pure Python or AI to assist. So let's get down to business. So what we're actually working with is a pretty straightforward PDF file. This particular PDF file appears to be system or automatically generated, which is definitely going to play in our favor and put us in the non AI camp when, when we're looking to extract values from this particular PDF. So looking at this one already, I'm seeing some very, like what I would classify as fairly structured data. Um, yeah, I think you know, we might not be that lucky, but for the most part, it feels like, okay, let's just focus on this page here. Let's imagine just for this task, we can do some sampling and testing on company details. How, how might I tackle that? So step one, make sure you've got Python installed. Step two, make sure you've got Jupyter Notebook set up and working. If you don't have those things, I've got heaps of videos on that. If you need any help, please drop a comment. Always happy to help out with another video. Um, but when I look at this, the first thing I think is, okay, how do I parse a PDF? in Python. So here we go, we're on PyPy, the Python packaging website, and straight away, a pure Python PDF library capable of splitting, merging, cropping, and transforming PDF files. So that's a really good place to start. And what I like about this package, if I scroll down, I actually have some starter code that I can start to play around with and have a feel, see if this is the right tool for the job. And I can figure all this out in the first sort of minute or two. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new Jupyter notebook. I'm going to paste in that sample code. And for our case, I've just popped in that exact PDF I just showed you, this one here. I've just popped that into the same directory as the Jupyter Notebook. And what I'm going to do is, I'm, yeah, I'm just going to shift enter, looking at page one. Now, pages are indexed zero. So if this is set to zero, shift enter, you can see here this matches the very first page. And then obviously page one, we've now got this really structured data here. So I'm just going to have a quick look at this and let's decide if it's the right structure for us. Look, as far as I can tell, it looks really clean and probably something we can do in a couple of lines of Python to extract out those key value pairs and generate some sort of table data. So let's have a go at that. So we've got some text. Let's have a look at the text without printing it. This is going to show you sort of line breaks. And here we go. So we've got some slash n. So that's actually a good thing because with the slash n, what we can probably do is do a bit of a split. And then with that one, backslash n, or all of a sudden we now have a list and that list now has all of those potential key value pairs. Now, when I look at this, I think to myself, well, there's actually a bit of a delimiter here. Um, and what I could probably do is probably say something like x for x in this list. Now, this is a little bit of list comprehension and nothing's really changed. All I've done now is I've exposed each element of that list. So x, um, that's now available to us inside this list comprehension. And so what I mean by that is what I can do is I can say, I can say something like if uh, this little colon is in X, uh, if that's true, uh, then return the value. So looking at this, this is now returning everything that has that colon. Um, this one here may give us a bit of trouble because it doesn't appear to, what have we got here? So we've got a website, that website's available there. Where is the colon in this one? Oh, because of the web address. Okay, cool. So what I might do then is I might actually do a little bit of um, slice notation and I might say, give me everything apart from negative one. Okay, cool. That's now gone. And so what we have now is we have a list of these key value pairs, but they're still one value. They're one string. And I can show you that because if I select the first element, you can see here it's just one string. So what I might do is I might take that first element as a bit of a test. So that's just a string, this one here. I'm going to call that one X just so we can have a bit of a play around, give ourselves a bit more space. And now with X, what I can do is I can have a bit of a go at seeing, okay, how might we get rid of that comma at the end? Okay, so we've got a string and now I want to I ultimately want to split X by that little colon. So I can say split and I can do that one there. Okay, uh, split by, well, don't do that, Adam. I do it in single quotes. Great, so now I've got an address and I've got uh, the actual address. I've got a key and I've got a value. So how do I convert that to key value pairs? What we want to do is we want to create that dictionary and update with those keys. So what we can do is we can actually take this nice little list here and we can just give this one a name, like something like contact list, okay? 
Okay, so now that we have contact list, we will run into one small issue where when we try to split by this character here, by the colon, we will see that this one will split into three. So a couple of different ways to work around that. What we might do is we might not split by just the colon. We might split by the colon and the space. That seems pretty consistent or oh, until we get to there, then it's not, that's a little bit annoying. Um, so what we might do is just in this case, we might need to do a bit of a workaround. So already this is where AI would just nail this task first time, but you know, we're writing a bit of code here, saving ourselves some compute. Um, but yeah, everywhere else, I'm just thinking, what's the good way to get around this? What we can probably do is a bit of a shortcut is we can probably, and this is really hacky, but in here we can probably just do a, a dot replace and we can probably replace the HTTP colon slash slash. We can probably just drop it off for now. Um, and that's okay. We'll add it back later. I know that sounds terrible, but we'll add that back later. So what we can now do is keeping things really simple. We can say for X in contact list. Okay. And we'll just say something like print out X and it's just going to print out each, each line. And we can say split by X. And what that's going to give us is uh, a bunch of lists. And each of those lists is going to have uh, not split by X, split by a colon. And each of those should have exactly two elements. And then what we could do is something as simple as contact dictionary is equal to empty dictionary. And then for each of the contact dictionaries, oops, each of the contact dictionaries, we'll just say, What's the key? Well, the key is the first element in the list. So we've got key and we've got value is equal to key and value. All right, so that's just basically assigning the first and the second element from here and here to K and V. And we're just gonna say contact dictionary K is equal to V. So shift enter on that. And now when I look at contact dictionary, a bit of mucking around. Um, not ideal. Uh, I do need, this is where it gets a bit hacky. I do need to go back and uh, update, update web and web needs to equal, um, <laughs> web needs to equal web plus our HTTP. Now this is a terrible way to do it. So I wouldn't recommend doing it this way, uh, but it will, it will fix it. Uh, we'll strip any white space off there. So when we look at that one, we now got our web address back. So this is how I would tackle this one with non-AI, a um, bit more setup, bit more mucking around. But if all of the PDFs are consistent, then this would work beautifully. It is when things start to get a bit messy where the text isn't always the same, that's when I would lean on AI to help just solve the problem. Here's a, a body of text, return back to me a structured JSON output in this format. In fact, even cleaner than this. I think this one's a bit messy still. So in this video, we've just gone through how to clean up and you know, get some structured text from a PDF. Make sure you're subscribed because uh, over the next couple of weeks, I'm going to be releasing a whole bunch of videos that do exactly this. So one video will be doing the non-AI way and then the next video, the AI way. So make sure you are subscribed because there's heaps more to come.